Every season of Australian Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else, hoping that it will all end with you feeling satisfied. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And first off, I want to thank the patrons for picking the story and every single story that you see on this channel. Without them, Once Upon an Island does not exist. But have you seen my other YouTube channel, Film Heart? There, I make videos and podcasts about movies, so if you like the videos I make and you like movies, then check it out. Links in the description. With that, 47 days, 24 people, one survivor. Sandra Diaz Twine, a four time player on the American version of Survivor, is a castaway on Australian Survivor's seventh season, Blood vs. Water. After winning her first two times on Survivor Pearl Islands and Survivor Heroes vs. Villains, there was no more being under the radar for her, and she embraced it. In Game Changers, Sandra went all out villain and took her throne as the Queen of Survivor until a tribe swap in the pre merge left her in an unfavorable position that ultimately saw her finally voted out on day 16. She returned for Survivor Island of the Idols where she served as a mentor on the aforementioned Island of the Idols, but then she came back to play on Survivor Winners at War where yet again, after another tribe swap, she did seem to be in a fine position this time until she made an out of character move by giving Denise Stapley her idol. And with that idol, Denise voted her out on day 16. Now, years later, Sandra is back, but this time her daughter Nina is playing as well for the first time. So how will Sandra fare in the Australian Outback? Will she do better than Russell Hans who got voted out at his first tribal on Australian Survivor? Let's find out. We start the season off by meeting our 24 castaways, but despite all of them arriving in in a normal fashion and being on their tribe's respective mats, Sandra is nowhere to be seen. That is until a helicopter flies her and her daughter in, really making a show of their arrival. One of the contestants even asks if this is Oprah. We then get Sandra and Nina's intro package. It's pretty epic and really makes her feel like royalty to us as a viewer. Anyone that's a Survivor fan knows that the queen of Survivor is none other than myself, Sandra. I'm the first two-time winner ever in the history of Survivor, and now I'm the queen. I'm excited to come to Australian Survivor because I have a secret weapon. My ride or die, my baby girl, Nina. Y'all better look out, because I taught her well. To the Survivor fans everywhere, I'm going to show them that I'm a new Sandra. I'm ready to play, I'm ready to participate, and I'm ready to win. You may be wondering, has Sandra gone soft since Winners at War? After all, she did leave the edge of extinction despite not even living there for one night, and now her daughter is here. Maybe she will be a kinder, gentler Sandra. If me and my daughter have to go head to head, I'm beating her ass. I'ma beat her down. Don't forget, queen stays queen. Yeah, this is the same Sandra, older and wiser, but the same woman we have grown to know and love. But the worst part for her game is how this entrance, combined with the host Jonathan saying she has won twice, removes any chance she had of starting off low key and possibly getting away with some people not knowing anything about her. The tribes are then divided into red, the blood tribe, and blue, the water tribe. Everyone on the season has a loved one, and they are all on separate tribes from each other. Sandra's on red, Nina's on blue. And right away we have a reward challenge for a fire pit. In a back Back and forth brawl, it comes down to Sandra and Nina. Whoever wins this wins their tribe the reward. Jonathan calls Nina the princess, but she says she is the queen. So who wins it? Go! Come on, Nina! Let's go, Sandra! We know the queen does not like challenges. Yeah, 
Sandra is 0 for 1 against her daughter, but she will get her next time. Upon arriving at the Red Camp, Jesse says he is a massive fan of Sandra, but at the same time, everyone should be worried with her there. Sandra then says, yeah, I was hoping no one would really know who I was when I chose to play, but apparently the show had a different idea. We then hear a bunch more people say, yeah, Sandra's dangerous. She knows what she's doing. She's watching, even if she's sitting looking, she is listening, she's so smart. At this point, Sandra needs her tribe to win immunity because she needs to integrate herself and she needs time to do that. Most of the talks at this red blood camp involve her and how dangerous she is. There are only three other returnees this season and none of them are viewed as big threats, especially since those three haven't made final tribal council before, let alone one. But Sandra has a strategy that is indeed smart and could help her integrate and make everyone feel more at ease with playing on her side. Right now, I'm just playing along. I'm gonna be very friendly at the beginning because I have to be very strategic and not play too hard, too fast. But believe me, when the time is right, I will lie, cheat, steal, I will scrap, I will throw down, it doesn't matter who you are. I have zero mercy for anyone. I will betray you, your mama, your daddy, and not give a damn who goes home. I will take out anyone but me to win Survivor. At the immunity challenge, Sandra does not sit out, surprised, as she seems to be making a concentrated effort to participate since Australian Survivor favors those who are good at challenges and they win immunity. So that is it for the premiere of Blood vs. Water, and so far at the Red Tribe, we've gotten a lot of Sandra, Sandra, Sandra. I personally think she is at odds with herself. On one hand, she wants to be royalty and loves the Queen Persona, but at the same time, that Queen Persona gets in the way of her game. People already view her as a threat for winning twice, but the entrance the show gives her, plus the previous few seasons she was on in American Survivor, took her from a sassy under the radar player to the Queen. And while Queen stays Queen, this means that every season she plays, someone wants to dethrone her. She has a solid plan in place on how she wants to play, so let's see if she can lower her threat level and make it even further than Russell Hance. Episode 2 starts off and as a reminder, Russell never made it past this episode on his season. So anyways, episode 2 starts off with us seeing that this is day 3 and the Red Tribe still doesn't have fire. However, we hear from Sophie how playing with Sandra is a once in a lifetime opportunity and she loves learning from her, but she knows in the back of her mind that Sandra is clearly a massive threat. Having someone like Sandra come into this game and being able to play with her is a once in a lifetime opportunity. She has won this game twice and for a reason. So whilst on one hand it's incredible to learn from someone like her and to share this experience, she's also one of the game's biggest threats. The Red Tribe finally makes themselves some fire and Sandra says if the Blue Tribe voted out Nina at the last Tribal Council, she's going for the jugular. Sandra actually says things like this a lot this season. That's because the editing of Australian Survivor is even more unbalanced than American Survivor and they seem to love to have players repeat the same things over and over again, just to pad out runtime. There may be 24 players on the cast with 12 on the Red Tribe, but at this point we know maybe three or four on the Red Tribe due to this imbalance that is favoring players like Sandra. Anyways, at the immunity challenge, we see that Nina is safe, but Andy, one of the three returning players, is voted out. Sandra does not sit out of this immunity challenge, so what happens? Episode 3 begins with Sam saying how the Red Tribe is one big happy family who knows how to have fun, which is easy to say when you haven't been to Tribal Council yet. Sandra then makes a smart observation about how Australians seem to enjoy playing a nice game, but that is not her. The difference between the way I play and I notice that the Australians play is that they, they like to play a nice game. Everyone's happy, smiling, getting along. I am the total opposite of that. Dirty Americans. <laughs> We're just low down. <laughs> what, what, what is morals? That doesn't exist. Sandra then identifies the fish out of water on her tribe is Dave. It's clear he is only here because his daughter is a super fan, and it is clear that he knows almost nothing about this game. So he is bound to make some mistakes. We then cut to Dave saying, Sandra needs to go. I think we're in good shape. Like we're, the thing with us is we, we haven't had that point where we've had to make a decision. Yeah. But in my mind, it's Sandra. Johnny Fairplay, Russell Hans, Dave. 
One doesn't sound like they belong in that trio, but this is Sandra's rival from here on out. Sandra says, no mercy. Anyone comes after her, they're a goner. For the first and only time during the season, Sandra sits out a reward challenge and Red goes on to win it. As a result of winning, the Red Tribe gets to send one of their own to what is called the Survivor Store. Dave is chosen to go and he brings along Khan of the Blue Tribe with him. What Sandra doesn't know that we do is how Dave and Khan both got an idol at the store. So upon arriving back at the Red Camp, Dave weaves a tale of how the store played out, and Sandra knows this dude is lying. I'm waiting to see how much truth he tells us because there's no way he went to the survivor store and didn't get something for himself. And at my foot drops this little package. The, that's it. I've, I've got the I've got the clue. And then I and I'm looking, feeling this thing, and I'm going, oh, hold on. That's bloody soap. I don't believe his full story. He might have an advantage or a clue. I think he does. If we lose immunity and we end up going to tribal council, I'm definitely gonna do everything in my power to go for Dave. Because I know I have a target on my back. I know I'm the queen for a reason. I know they want me out. But it won't happen. However, the blood tribe goes on to lose immunity, so back at camp, Sandra is sweating a bit. No one knows where the lines really are in this tribe, and pretty much everyone has said she is a threat. Dave then tells everyone, we need to get out Sandra now, and then a plan is put into place to split votes between her and Kate, just in case an idol is played by Sandra. However, Sandra has been working this whole time to be with whoever's in the majority. She knows that this is the only way to survive. I value alliances. Without an alliance, you can't play this game. No one can play and win this game alone. Alliances has to be your number one priority. You have to be with the majority. If not, you're not going anywhere. You're just going to be picked off. Word then gets back to Sandra that Dave is saying to vote her out. Sandra says it is time to lead an assault on Australian Survivor. Sam has been defending Dave, saying he's good, let's not vote him out. But nah, the plan is now to vote out Dave, with the few people on Dave's side throwing votes on Kate, and they assume Sandra as well. However, at Tribal Council, Dave makes a rookie mistake by throwing Sam under the bus despite her defending him pretty much all day. I not only knew one, one game plan, but I, I'm not surprised as a couple out there because Sam's the, the social butterfly of the group. She flicks from person to person. She's actually, yeah. So that worries you? I know there's combos that, that were specifically about me. And blindside, juicy Dave sort of has a ring to it. Ah, just what Sandra wanted, Dave making some rookie mistakes. She goes to vote and she says, Oh, you shot yourself in the foot. You dug your own grave. Adios, mate. However, just as Jonathan goes to read the votes, Dave plays his idol, negating the eight votes against him, and Kate is voted out instead, three to one to zero. Kate, the tribe has spoken. They have. Episode four is here, and Sandra made it further than Russell in terms of episodes and tribal councils. She always knew he was stupid. However, she says that last tribal council was a three ring circus and somehow Dave surviving doesn't sit right with her. At the reward challenge, we once again get a Sandra versus Nina face off and. Go! Sandra's got her locked up. Sandra has a grip on her leg, pulling her back from the road. Daughter defeating mother and she likes it. Once again, Sandra loses to her daughter, zero for two. Her tribe still wins the overall reward challenge though. And back at camp, Sandra sees Sophie trying to take charge. And to be fair, Sophie says in confessional that she is an alpha type who can't help but be in charge. Sophie is then talking about Sandra behind her back. And when Sandra walks over, Sophie makes it so obvious what they were just doing. <laughs> I told Sandra that we all want her here. Yeah, of course. We want her here. She's the, she's the queen. She's the queen. I'm like an American eagle, just flying around in the sky, watching these little mice scurry until I could pick them off one by one by one. The Red Tribe goes on to lose immunity to no fault of Sandra and back at camp, Sophie says, hey Sandra, let's vote out Dave because that's what me and my Alpha Guys Alliance is doing. Good thing that Sandra isn't being targeted, but she doesn't like how Sophie is the puppet master for these big burly men. Sandra wants Sophie gone next. Sandra then plants some seeds in others' heads that Sophie is a dictator and she needs to go now. They've said to me, just yeah. write Dave's name down tonight. You didn't say nothing else to me. It's yeah. like you just tell me what to do. Yeah. Always told what to do. Yeah. 
I'm gonna break up that whole Sophie, Ben, Croc, Jordan alliance that thinks they're running uh, this tribe. Sophie, she's the boss. She's putting these plans together. But I want Sophie out of the game. So I have to get six of us to vote for Sophie. But I need to be as subtle as possible. Sophie and Jordan just told me that the plan is Dave, so make sure you write his name down. My plan is to vote out Sophie. At Tribal Council, which Blue gets to attend as part of winning their immunity challenge, Sandra goes to vote for Sophie, and she says, Adios, mate. And just like that, in a six to four vote, Sophie is voted out of the tribe. Sophie, you've been voted out of your tribe, but you're not out of the game. Uh, because tonight, you will be joining the Blue Tribe. Wait, what? Sophie is voted to the other tribe? Jonathan never said that this is what they were going to be doing, and unfortunately, this is the plight of Australian Survivor having so many days and episodes that they've been doing twists like this since season one to just spread out the game. So Sophie gets to go to the blue tribe. Episode five sees one of the tribe members handing out nuts to everyone that Dave got at the Survivor store. And Sandra says, well, there is a first for everything. The Survivor gods are great that I've woken up with a nut on my head. <laughs> no, this actually was the first. We then hear from Sandra about how again at Tribal, despite getting the votes she needed to eliminate someone, she was blindsided by a twist. An idol and a twist have stopped her from getting out her targets, which just sucks. She then says, hey, we have to tell the other tribe to get rid of Sophie, really painting her as a villain for getting a free pass on that last tribal council. And then at the reward challenge, Sophie helps Sandra out by making sure everyone knows that Sophie is a villain. That was an epic blindside, but unfortunately it didn't go too well to plan because I'm now in bed with their family members and I have a great influence over what happens to them. So. Game on. So the challenge here is to knock your opponent off the platform, which is a must have challenge for any season like Blood vs. Water, Heroes vs. Villains, or hopefully one day a Survivor Rivals season. It's a good time and it even allows the host to say awkward things like this. Josh would love to get one on his cousin. All those years of pillow fights at bedtime put to the test right here. Those are two grown men. Anyways, it all comes down to Sandra to win the reward for her tribe. And of course, she is facing off against Nina. This almost feels contractually obligated at this point, but hey, time for Sandra to keep Nina from snatching her crown. Sandra says this means war. I'm gonna get grounded after this. <laughs> I ain't buying her shit for Christmas and I'm not paying for her wedding. Yeah. Go. Oh, four, three. However, Sam of the Red Tribe tells Blue, hey, get rid of Sophie when you get the chance. So Sandra's plan worked. Then at the immunity challenge, the Red Tribe wins and a come from behind victory in episode six starts. And this is something I feel like needs to be said more so than an American survivor. Australian survivor loves to splice together confessionals to make it sound like someone to say something and they really aren't good at covering it up. American Survivor does this, but they're really good at covering it up. Not so much here. For example, I count at least four different confessionals being used to have Sandra say that Sophie was likely voted out at the Blue Tribal Council. At the Water Tribal Council last night, Sophie most likely was voted out. It is day 13 and Sandra says she is worried about the upcoming day 16 since in the past it has done her in twice. Once was her fault and once was not. We then get a surprisingly nice backstory from her that gives some feelings to this season's villain so far. I've participated in five survivors and I've been sole survivor twice. If it wasn't for survivor, I wouldn't have the things that I have right now. I put my daughter through college. Survivor has given me the ability to give my family more than I ever had. Sandra then says, hey Dave, since you wrote my name down, you are cursed to lose. Clearly trying to threaten him as if Dave knows about curses in Survivor. Plus it isn't even true. Sarah voted for Sandra and won Game Changers. So anyways, Sandra says the trio of Dave, Jay, and Amy need to be broken up. But then at the reward challenge, once again, we see Sandra versus Nina and... And like a star quarterback, Nina lands the touchdown for Blue. Zero out of four. Her tribe goes on to lose reward and back at camp, Amy is hunting for an idol, sensing she is in trouble. So everyone goes out on a public idol hunt, 
but Amy still gets it. It is time for immunity and Red falls behind fast, but due to a Herculean effort by Sam, Red regains the lead. So does Sandra capitalize on this? But she does it, she gets it, taking the lead back for Bloom. Maybe she would be better sitting out, then people wouldn't see her weaknesses on such clear display all the time. Nina gets the final shot for Blue, scoring her first time, and they win. Sandra is over five against her daughter. Back at camp, Sandra wants Dave out. Someone asks if it is too early for that, and she says, no way, but add in some American curse words with that. And Michelle tells Sandra about Amy's idol, and Sandra says, I am not happy with that. Not happy with it at all. Amy's idol changes everything. I'm not happy with that. Amy is new to the game. She thinks because she's pretty that it's gonna carry her through, and because she cuddles at night with the guys that that'll carry her through. But I'm looking to split that up. Forget it, it's over for you. Sandra then devises a split vote plan between Amy and Jay and with the attention to flush out Amy's idol. Maybe this time Sandra's plan won't be thwarted by an idol or a twist. Everyone seems on board with this and Sandra says Amy and Jay have been lying to her all day, playing like real rookies. She knows she is getting some votes. So when Sandra goes to vote for Amy, I don't have a stitch of mercy when it comes to voting tonight. We're flushing out your idol. Adios, mate. Just as Sandra planned, Amy plays her idol and Jay is voted out four to three to zero. Finally, a plan goes the way Sandra wanted it to all the way to the end. Jay, the tribe has spoken. It is day 15 and Jonathan says to everyone, drop your buffs. We are switching things up. Oh no, what timing to have a tribe swap right before the infamous day 16 where tribe swaps have not worked in Sandra's favor in the past. Both times she won, there were no tribe swaps. Nina says, please don't put me on the same tribe with my mom. Please don't put me on the same tribe with my mom. But nope, they're on the same tribe together. They then have a reward challenge and Sandra once again loses on the round she participates in. And she has yet to be a net positive in any challenge it seems like. However, the red tribe goes on to lose reward and back at camp, the numbers are not in Sandra's favor. She was doing just fine on the old blood tribe, but this new blood tribe has six original water members and three original blood. And not only that, but two of those original blood members are Dave and Amy, not great. Nana's a legend, love Nana. Sandra, huge, huge threat. This is someone who I've really got my eyes on at the moment. It feels like day one all over again and Sandra has a lot of work to do. Sandra tries to make good with Dave and Amy, but nothing seemingly comes of it. However, in another heavily spliced confessional, Nina says she wants to keep her mom around, but she will do whatever her alliance decides on. We're the only mother and daughter relationship out here and we're super close and people know that. I've been watching her play Survivor since I was five. She has that experience. She understands the game and she's done it before. And she's my mom. I would love to keep her around as long as possible, but I don't know how that's gonna sit with everybody. Then at the immunity challenge, Red really needs to win this to give Sandra time to integrate. And at one point, the host Jonathan calls Sandra a handbrake in the challenge, despite Red being in the lead and Sandra actually not holding them back here. However, Red goes on to lose immunity and the fear of day 16 creeps in for Sandra. But she says Nina and her alliance came over to this new tribe, so maybe they can include her. That makes her feel better after all. The tribe then discusses how they are tired of losing challenges and thinks, Mel might be their best option for elimination, which is of course good for Sandra. But then someone says, what if we did someone else instead? Let's have some fun. We've got the majority here in blue. So I've got another idea. Pros of voting Sandra, number one. She's not very good at challenges, so she should go. She's a big threat. She's won too many times. She doesn't need more money. And it's a good one for my resume to say, I was a part of the blind side that sent Sandra. Then at Tribal Council, Sandra makes a last ditch effort to save herself, making some good points and some that clearly benefit her along with forgetting Oolong ever existed. People always talk about staying strong and voting out the weakest. It doesn't matter really who you vote out because that doesn't mean that because that person is gone, now you're gonna win everything because that is not how Survivor works. And if you think that, you better open your eyes. There's never been a tribe that dominates. Wake up. Mark, you know how it is. You're strong, you're happy now, you're gonna have rewards. But all these alpha males that win all these challenges at first, by the time it's every man for himself, 
Just remember that the weak will always outnumber the strong and they will come after you one after the other. The first time you don't win that individual immunity, you will be going home. And that's why you need people that have your back. It's not bad, but it is too late. She votes for Dave, saying one more adios when doing so. And when Nina goes to vote, Jeff Probst would be ecstatic. You always tell me to stick with the majority. And unfortunately, it looks like the majority is coming after you. I wish we could have played together longer. Jonathan goes to read the votes and... First vote, Dave. Sandra. 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 Sandra, sixth person voted out of blood versus water, Sandra. Despite day 16 now repeating itself for a third time and Sandra having no chance with the swap, she's very gracious on her way out the door. And I appreciate being able to play the game I love in Australia. So thank you very much to all of those that reached out to me and invited me to play. Sandra, the tribe has spoken. I know. So let's break this down. How is Sandra Diaz twine as a character? Queen stays queen. The show gave her time to shine for seven episodes, and frankly, it was probably equivalent to a whole season of her, if not more, on one of her American seasons. She tore it up with 52 confessionals that reminded us how smart she is and how much she embraces that villainous role. She was an anti-hero her first two seasons, but after her second win, what you see here is Queen Sandra. Unfortunately, she gets screwed by a swap because her on screen brought an energy that a lot of players this season, that a lot of players this season lacked and she's true gold. She didn't care to play it up for the Camerons at all while also being her authentic self at camp. It was a win-win for everyone. Let's get this villain on South African Survivor and complete the English speaking Survivor Trinity. Out of 17 character moments shown on the show, six were heroic and 11 were villainous, making Sandra Diaz Twine a villain character on Australian Survivor Blood vs. Water. Now how is Sandra Diaz Twine as a strategist? Had Sandra not been a two-time winner and just an American who was given a shot on Australian Survivor, almost guaranteed she makes it to the merge and maybe the top five. She still has the social game that somehow had her making moves, eliminating people, and yet not really being a target. If this was a season where no one knew who she was, Mel goes in episode seven, not Sandra. She got swap screwed as she was in no real danger to go home on the original Blood Tribe as anyone that posed a threat to her became her target and they would get sniped. Sandra with baggage is what you saw this season. Sandra without baggage makes it deep. Out of 30 strategic moments shown on the show, 16 were smart and 14 were dumb, making Sandra Diaz Twine a smart strategist on Australian Survivor Blood vs. Water. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.